question is what is the trade off between bias and variance so bias and variance are two sides of a coin you can say and then there is a trade off that we have to do when we are coming up with a model so let's see what exactly this trade off is bias is a machine learning model in the in a machine learning model that comes from simple assumptions about the model like if you come up with a very simple model and there can be a bias that can come and that can be like you know you can like cause of underfitting of data and it also reduces the accuracy of the model for example in this diagram the first one is a high bias example like on the leftmost side if you see there's a straight line that is dividing data into two different like you know sides and that line is not fitting the data properly like because of which what happens is that we are not able to predate or like you know find the things with more accuracy so that's the bias because we thought oh, a simple line can explain this data that's what we went to but it doesn't mean that simplicity is always correct right so we are getting high bias because of this simple model and the variance in model comes from high complexity so if you have a highly complex algorithm so if you see the this example here the rightmost example where we have a zigzag line this is the high complexity and due to variance the model becomes sensitive to variation in data so if data varies then like the model may not behave right and variance will also call cause the inclusion of noise in the model and that will be overfitting of data so if you see this zigzag line is actually accurately meeting the uh, like our all the points but still this is like overfitting because model is memorizing it and it is becoming pretty complex and with the new data set it might not behave with accuracy whereas the middle diagram which is a just right one where we have the right kind of curve right kind of line that explains the model so in uh, bias versus variance trade off if you see this is the kind of diagram we normally see so in this diagram if you see one vertical axis in the error that how much error is like in our prediction and the horizontal axis is model complexity red line is the bias and the uh, blue line is the variance right so when the model is not complex which is like you know on the left side at that time the bias is very high right we have a model very simple model but very high bias which means the number of errors is very high and then what we do is that we try to make the model a little complicated right when we start making the model complicated then the bias starts reducing right okay so our accuracy starts increasing the number of total errors goes down right? but then when we make the model too complicated then bias reduces right number of errors do not reduce because now our model like you know in the test data set because model will find more variance because of which the number of errors will go high right that is what happens when we have high variance so we will have to find the optimum model complexity where we have bias and variance like you know at the optimum level like you see the point where they are intersecting that is the optimum le level right we don't want too less bias also and we don't want too less very like too high variance also so we want to find the optimum point therefore in machine learning we have to balance the bias and variance so that model provides prediction with optimal uh, accuracy so it should be optimum accuracy not like highest accuracy not the lowest accuracy we do not want high bias or high variance in our model and this is an art to maintain balance between bias and variance while creating a machine learning model so over the time with your experience you'll learn how to maintain the balance between both of these so the bias variance dilemma or this problem is the conflict in trying to simultaneously minimize these two sources of error that will prevent supervised learning algorithms from generalizing beyond their training set so this trade off will apply to all forms of supervised learning like classification regression and structured output learning so all of these models like you know we suffer from this problem right but it does not apply in all learning algorithms so we generally want to choose a model that is quite accurate in capturing the regularities in the training data but it also generalizes well to see the unseen data right so first it tries to capture some kind of a relationship between the data that it has seen which is your training data set and then it also gives a generalization that works for the test data which it has not seen right 
So generally it is typically impossible to do both simultaneously. So, but still we try different techniques to do that. And models with high variance are usually more complex. That is one way of identifying that. And that's why they can represent the training data set more accurately, but they may not work better on the test data set. And models with higher bias will be relatively simple, but their uh, results will be of low accuracy. Right? So their predictions may not be so good. So one way to resolve this trade-off is to use hybrid models or ensemble learning. So if you use ensemble learning, that really helps. You can have multiple models combined together and that can help. For example, boosting will combine many weak high bias models in an ensemble and that will have the lower bias than the individual model. So final result will have a lower bias and that's why we can get it better results. Similarly, if you use bagging technique, it will combine strong learners in a way that reduces their variance. So that is a bagging technique, right? So that way we can use bagging and boosting. We have another session on bagging and boosting. So do watch our playlist and that will help you cover most of these topics in detail. Another method of uh, like trading of the bias and variance is that we can use cross validation so that we can tune the models. In cross validation, we create a uh, like from training data set and the validation data set and then we run multiple experiments so that data can be trained on some set and validated on the next set so that way we find the right set of hyperparameters so all these are techniques to trade off virus and variance all right that's all on this topic and if you have any questions or any comments do let us know in the comment section and if you have any feedback for us do share with us we'll be happy to cover any new topic that you have on this Thank you and do subscribe to this channel so that you can keep getting latest up to dates on the machine learning.